Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Divan and welcome to scardia.com. Topic of the lecture today is intestinal nematode infections part 2. Now in the first part we have already talked about hookworm and roundworm. In this lecture we're going to talk about all the rest of the intestinal nematode infections that are left and that are important here to mention. First of all we're going to start with strong LADSS. We're going to talk about what's the causative organism of strong LADSS. What does it look like? We're going to talk about its morphology. Next one, we're going to talk about its life cycle and that what through what process it goes, through what organs in our body does it go through to get the maturity phase and how do we get it out of our body and how does it always make its way back into our body. We're going to talk about its signs and symptoms, the what signs and symptoms the patient will present to you with and then we're going to talk about what's the treatment modalities we have for this pathology. Next one we have trichuriasis in which we're going to talk about what trichuriasis is, what's the causative organism of trichuriasis. Next one we're going to talk about the life cycle of trichuriasis, that through what processes and what organism does this uh, parasite go through to get to our body and in our body what pathology does it cause and what's the outcome of it. Then we're going to talk about signs and symptoms of the trichuriasis and we're going to try to differentiate it from different other parasitical infections. Next one we're going to talk about different diagnostic modalities we have for trichuriasis and how do we definitely diagnose and make our diagnosis of trichuriasis and then we're going to talk about the treatment modalities we have for trichuriasis. Next one we're going to talk about enterobiasis and what enterobiasis is, what's the causative organism of enterobiasis, what's the life cycle of it, how does it get to our human body and what pathologies does it cause there? Why does these patients always have this perianal itch? And we're going to talk about what female enterobius uh, species causes in the perianal region. Where does it lay the eggs? What is its life cycle? What are the clinical features that we are going to be presented with? What's going to be diagnostic modalities that we use? And what's the treatment option for enterobiasis? Next one, we're going to talk about trichostrongyliasis. What's the causative organism of it? What's the size of it? What does it look like on the microscope and morphological slide? And then we're going to talk about what's the life cycle of it, diagnostic modalities of it, signs and symptoms of it, and then the treatment options we have. Next one, we're going to talk about aniskiasis, in which we're going to talk about how does it lead to a human body when it's already present in the sea, when it's already associated with the sea mammals, how does it make its way into a human body, what's the life cycle of it and what are the diagnostic modalities and treatment modalities we have for this pathology. Next on, we're going to talk about capillariasis, what capillariasis is, what's the causative organism, depending upon its morphology we're going to talk about, its diagnostic modalities, its signs and symptoms and treatment options. Next on, at the end we're going to talk about abdominal angiostrongyliasis, that what's the causative organism of it, what's the signs and symptoms we get and what's the treatment options we have. So for watching this complete video lectures and the variety of lectures which start from anatomy, physiology, pathology, microbiology, pharmacology to medicine and surgery, there are thousands of lectures, there's already an option of trial lecture for you so that you can get accommodated with it and attend to it to avail all of this. Please subscribe to Skydia.com.